Welcome. Hello. Good evening. Nice to see you here in person and welcome if you're on Zoom or Facebook Live. We're going to start a 10-minute meditation. I invite you to join me by getting comfortable with your feet on the floor and your head resting in a comfortable position. Let's take a nice, deep, natural, rhythmic breath together. And just rest easy in the spirit of the divine and find that center place within you. Breathing naturally, easily, perhaps saying the mantra, God is the love that I am. And I'll bring us out in 10 minutes.
when you're comfortable and you feel at peace with the moment, slowly open your eyes and come back into the presence of the here and now in the room. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Mary and I are uh, asking you to join us in singing our opening chant, God is in this place. Sounds lovely. So hello to the virtual world. If you're here to join us for this hour of divine consciousness, thank you. We're glad you're here in person in the room. Welcome. I'm thrilled you're here. And I ask you as a gentle, loving reminder to now, if you can remember, if you haven't already, to turn off or mute your phone, unlike me five weeks ago. So let's pray. In this holy moment, in this holy place, in this place of divine presence, of love and joy and harmony, I know that God surrounds in, through, and as all of us in this very moment. No matter where we are, God is omnis, omnis, omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing, and ever-present. And I know that each of us are aligned through, around, as, and of this God's presence, this divine spirit that inhabits each of us provides us with the blessings and benefits of all the attributes of God, joy and harmony and wholeness and truth and beauty, serenity, peace and calm, clarity, are all ours because we are children of God of the Most High. And so tonight, I know we are blessed to be together. No matter where we are, all people in all places are already blessed, but we're especially, especially blessed to be here together in this moment of uplifting consciousness together. We are going to hear the divine consciousness of the word through our beautiful, lovely friend, practitioner Liz Racy. We are blessed by the joyous music of Mary Hyland and Sam Krieger, the volunteers and the staff, the sound man. We are all blessed by being together. Our rising tide lifts all of us, and we know more when we leave here tonight about who we are through God than we did when we arrived, because we are all open to the harmony and wholeness that divine spirit delivers to us through us, as us. And so I'm grateful and my heart soars like a hawk to know this is true. I release this into the law of mind, saying it so, and together we can all say, Amen. Amen. And now if you join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We have a special treat. Our practitioner, Liz Racy, is going to sign for us. She was inspired me so much before. Okay, so we're talking about discourse to find a new course, because there's a discourse, there's a conversation going on, there's a discourse of separation happening in our country, 
There's a discourse of hate and anger and shame and blame happening in our world. And that discourse starts here. Um, for Lent, I'm not a practicing Catholic, but I still like to practice Lent. And for Lent, I decided to give up complaining. It's not going so well. I'm constantly challenged. I realized if I really want to give up complaining for Lent, I need to just shut up. Ah, so wish me luck. I'm still working on it. So, you know, we came to this planet. We incarnated. We took a physical life for two basic reasons. Many, many, many reasons, but two basic reasons. The first is to fulfill a heart's desire. We incarnated with a heart's desire. God pl placed that desire in our heart. We came here to fulfill it. The other thing is to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Those are our two jobs, fulfill our heart's desire and be a beneficial presence on the planet. We all came here to be healers. And this is what we need right now more than anything, I think. We can all agree on that. So tonight I'm reading from um, God, the Substance of All Form by Joel S. Goldsmith. <clears throat> The consciousness of a healer must be the consciousness of an individual who entertains no hate, envy, jealousy, or malice. It is easy to determine whether your treatment or prayer is going to be effective or whether you can do good healing work. How great a sense of personal hurt do you entertain in the world? How great a sense of personal hurt do you entertain in the world. We may temporarily feel a grudge against some political leader, you think, or even somebody down the street, but the main point is not to let these grudges go too deep, get over them in a hurry, because they will keep us from doing good healing work. And that's why we're here. We're here to do good healing work. And so, you know, watch what you pray for, you're going to get it. And um, I was praying to be more loving. You know, all the craziness that's going on. I'm like, I want to be that beneficial presence on the planet. I want to be more loving. I do. I really do. And um, then, you know, the universe gives you experiences for you to, like, check that out. And um, a few weeks ago, um, I was walking my dog, and another dog is off leash, comes bounding around the corner, and attacks my dog and myself. And, you know, I'm fighting him off. And um, finally, the owner comes running around the corner and grabs her dog by the collar. And I say, you know, there's a leash law. And she goes like this. I'm like, OK, Karen, you're about to get a piece of my Irish mind. And I'm so sorry for anyone named Karen, because I don't know how that came about. But now we have this issue of a, what Karen means. And this woman was a Karen. And I, I was so angry. And I, she just walks off, goes, goes into the apartment where her dog attacked, attacked me. And I'm walking home. And I am cursing that woman out. I had an opportunity to be more loving. And I missed it. And I missed it. So again, I continue to pray. Let, let me be more loving. Let me be more loving in my heart. We all need to be more loving in our heart. This is how we lift humanity. Let me be more loving. And uh, the other week, walking my dog, same lady, her dog comes around the corner again, attacks again. I get thrown into this concrete divider, and I get, I'm scratched all over. I'm bleeding. My, my face is black and blue. And I'm hanging on to my dog and trying to kick her dog off. And she comes around. And she grabs her dog by the collar. And she goes, are you OK? I go, no, I'm injured. And she went right into her apartment. Who does that? Who does that? So again, I had this opportunity to be loving. Because you know what? And what did I do? Oh, yeah, I cursed her all the way home. And that is not fit for translation. Um, 
But I had that opportunity once again, and when I got home, I was so disappointed in myself. I was so disappointed in myself. I should pray that her heart opens, that she can become a better dog owner, that her dog is blessed. You know, at some point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to fight that off. Some, some other person, some littler person, some older person, might, you know, might not have been able to fight that off. So I should pray for her awakening. That's what I should pray for. And once I finally realized this, that is what I started to do, was to pray for her awakening. And, you know, when we pray for someone else, we're not praying for them to change. We're praying for us to change. We're praying for our perception to change. We're praying for us to see the truth. And the truth is, she's a child of God. And I need to recognize that regardless of what the experience is. Not easy. But absolutely, this is our challenge. This is what we're called forth to do right here and right now. So we see what's going on here. It's just heartbreaking what's happening in Ukraine and, and Russia and other hot spots in the world. Cuba, there are many hot spots in the world where it is heartbreaking to see what's going on. So who's praying for Putin? And, and praying for him to drop dead is not the same thing. But I'm serious. I'm serious. They, when, when I said that, did anyone go, Rrr. was there a place in your being that you went, Rrr. but that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. We have to pray for our enemy, truly, with all our heart, with all our love, with all our being. If we can all do this, if we can come to a united consciousness of praying for each other, that everyone is awakened, that everyone opens up, we're not, we will see war no more. It is possible. You know, people go, you know what, that, it's just not possible. There's too many people with too many differences and too many different thoughts. It's not, it is possible. It is absolutely possible. It's the nature of God to be peace. It is the nature of each and every one of us to be peaceful. It is the nature of each and every one of us to be loving. So we have to release that human hardness, wherever it is in our being, wherever it came from. We have to work on releasing that. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you know about Ho'oponopono. Yeah, the uh, Hawaiian uh, prayer for forgiveness. It's a Hawaiian prayer for forgiveness. And, and it, I'll catch you up for anyone who doesn't know about it. Um, so there was this psychiatrist in Hawaii and um, he was asked to run this uh, institute for the criminally insane. And it was a horrible place. And every 18 months, they had to hire a new person to run the institute because nobody could take the depression in the institute for too long. They kept quitting. So the board asked this doctor, his name is like Hanalaka Waka Shaka Khan. Um, <laughs> Len Hugh, that part's true, Dr. Len Hugh, but the first name is Hakalaka Shaka Khan. Um, anyway, he said, yes, I will take the job, but I won't meet with any of the patients. I won't meet with any of the inmates, which is what was depressing the other people who were running the institute was meeting with these criminally insane people and going, there is no way we can help them. So he said, I won't meet with anyone. And they said, fine, just run the joint. And what he did every day he would take out a file for one of the inmates, and he would read about them and the horrible deed they did that put them here. And he would move through his initial thoughts of anger. How dare you? What's wrong with you? He would move through those initial thoughts, and he would stay there with this one patient in his consciousness. He would stay there until he could say, I want to make sure I'm doing it in the right order, until he could say, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And you're like, well, what did he have to do with that horrible crime that happened in this person? What? Because there's one life. We are all emanations of the one life. We are all sunbeams from the one sun. So if we take responsibility for each other, then we can experience a healing. So he did this. I, I think it was like two years. He did this for two years. Every day, another file. I love you. I'm so sorry. 
please forgive me. Thank you. And he, when he felt complete, he'd be done with that file, however long it took him to feel complete. At the end of those two years, that institute was closed because everyone was healed. This is how powerful, I love you, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, thank you. This is how powerful God's love is. We must take responsibility for each other. We must pray for Putin. We must pray for our enemy. We must pray for everything to be lifted up. This is our responsibility. This is why we took a body. We didn't just come here to sing and dance. OK, we came here for that, too, because that's a lot of fun. But we came here to inspire each other. We came here to, to be a loving presence for each other. This is our responsibility. So you know what? Let, let's do this. Let's do this real thing. I'm going to read one more thing to you, and then we're going to do an experiential. I'm going to ask you to be open and available, praying for your enemy. Peace. This is Ernest Holmes from um, Science of Mind magazine, 1955. This is how long, 1955, something older than me. Um, World peace is a thing the average person believes is somebody else's responsibility, when actually there is something very practical he can do about it. I presume that everyone would rather have peace more than anything else on Earth. If everyone is really desiring peace, and if desire were an effective prayer for peace, then we would have peace a long time ago. All of this applies to war and peace, for we are discussing the possibility of a spiritual power consciously used and directed can change the destiny of the world. A spiritual power consciously used and directed can change the destiny of the world. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to just accept that and say, yes, I'm going to say yes to that. And you know what? I'm going to do more than say yes to that. I'm not going to curse my neighbor walking her dog without a leash. I'm going to say more than yes to that. I am going to be a loving presence on the planet. And we are challenged. <laughs> we are challenged every day, aren't we? I mean, come on, really. It isn't every day that there's something that happens that you go, what? There, there is. And right there, that is the answer to your prayer when you go, what? Then you go, yes, and now I'm going to open my heart. And now I'm going to be more loving. And now I'm going to stand for the God presence. I'm going to stand for what I say I believe in. We come here. We enjoy church. We celebrate community. What do we believe in? We believe we can change the world through our loving, open hearts. What a blessing. What a blessing. So let's do this. I want you to get comfortable. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Just let yourself breathe in deeply. Feel any hard place in your physical being, your back, your neck any place right now, just breathe light into that place. You can feel it relax. With every breath, you can feel, ah, I am free. Breathe, ah, I am free of judgment. I am free of a discourse that no longer serves me. Just let yourself breathe that in for a moment. I am free. Right now, I want you to just feel God's love right around your heart chakra. See light there. Feel that 
perfect, pure love. Bring into your mind's eye someone you love dearly. A child, a parent, a friend, a neighbor, someone you love so dearly that when you see their face in your mind's eye, you can't help but smile. Your heart is smiling with love right now for this person. Feel that love expand from your physical being. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel the warmth? Can you feel the love right from your physical being? It's expanding. It's moving outward. And now that beautiful soul you love so much, See their face morph into someone who has hardened your heart. Who has hardened your heart? Who has hurt you? Who do you feel you can't forgive? See that beautiful loving face morph into this face. And in your mind's eye say, I love you. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just let this love embrace them. Let this love embrace that experience that hardened your heart. Let yourself be free of judgment, anger, discord, let yourself be free. In that freedom are blessings. If you were experiencing your greatest heart's desire right now, right now, how would you feel? You're experiencing your greatest heart's desire. How do you feel? How do you feel? Feel it now. Let it overtake every aspect of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual being. Sit here with this for a moment. Yes, I'm the yes of God. Yes, I'm the yes of God. I'm the peace of God, yes. I'm the love of God, yes. I bring harmony wherever I go, yes. Feel that now. Just say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. Thank you, beloved, I am. Thank you. I am presence right within my being for this awareness, for this awakening. And we awaken all those with our awakening. So just take a breath right now. Keep that feeling tone going. Keep that feeling tone going. Today, tonight, tomorrow, every day, we've got to keep this feeling tone going. Not only feeling plus thought equals your life, not only does that feeling tone bring to you the blessings you are desiring, it lifts and heals and transforms the world more than anything. We are in agreement. We are a beneficial presence on this planet, and we will settle for nothing less than that. We will always stay open to our sister, our brother, 
our neighbor, to all people everywhere. I'm so grateful to know that that is our truth. So, keep that feeling tone going. Keep that feeling tone going. And tomorrow when you're confronted with a challenge, remember this feeling tone. Oh yeah, I'm the place of love. Oops, I forgot. Yes, I'm the place of love. When a challenge comes up, yes, I'm the solution. For I am the place where God shines light, love, peace, harmony, and goodness. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. And let's really anchor this. Let's anchor peace now by just calling forth the Creator, the thing itself. One life, one power, one presence, one good. It is God. It is everywhere. There is no place that God is not. We can never be separate. God loved itself so much, it thought up each one of us in love to experience our heart's desire and to be the place of love. So right here and right now, we are making a commitment to our high holy self that yes, I will stay in the I am presence. I will stay in the I am presence of love. I will stay in the I am presence of peace. I will be unbotherable. Nothing can knock me off this anchor of goodness and harmony for I remember with every breath, thought, word, and action that God is my life. Good is my life. I am a walking blessing. This is what we know. And right now as we are knowing that each and every one of us are a walking blessing, a miracle made manifest. Right here we remember that. We bring into our hearts the entire world. Right in this moment, we're bringing in the people of Ukraine and we're saying, God, send an army of angels of light and love that the people of Ukraine rise up and transfiguration happens. We're calling forth an angel's army of angels to go forth in Russia right here and right now and rise up the people of Russia and love and harmony is happening. Transformation is happening right here and right now. Why? Because we are in the united consciousness of God. We are in the united consciousness of peace. We are saying yes to this and so much more. We cannot be moved, cannot be moved. God is our life, God is our good. God is blessing us all the time. Thank you, thank you. Bring into your heart right now anyone who's on your prayer list any friend, family member you're holding in prayer who's having a challenge right now, we're saying God is on the field. God is in charge. And right where they are, they are being lifted and transformed and healed. We are in the yes of the law, the yes of life, the yes of God. So I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest, it is made whole, and we celebrate, we celebrate, we say yes, betcha by a golly wow. And so it is. Together we say amen. Sam, do you have anything to say? Any announcements or anything? Oh, offering. See, you know, I always forget that part. I don't.
don't think that makes the church very happy. <laughs> yeah, I see the offering part, Liz. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so let's prepare our offering gift. Place it over your heart. You at home, there's many ways to give. Go to North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Dot org and find all the different ways that you can participate in supporting your spiritual community. So let's take a breath. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Adam just ran down from the tech booth to tell me the mic was overheating, so I guess I'm hot. <laughs> so thank you for being with us tonight. I'm grateful you're all here, virtually and in person. It's great to be back in church, right? So I have more than a few announcements. Patience. For all the ways you can make donations to church, go to nhcrs.org org slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner will be available after the service in person and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live and you want some prayer with a practitioner, switch over. Wednesday evening service and book signing with Practitioner Emeritus Daryl Gurney next Wednesday. The meditation is at 6.50 p.m. The service is at 7 p.m. Join us for an amazing service with Practitioner Author Daryl Gurney. His topic will be The Incredible Lightness of Starting, A Spiritual Imperative. Daryl will be signing and selling his book, The Back 40, after service, or you can purchase it on Amazon. There will be a memorial service for Emeritus Practitioner Dolores Carlucci on Friday, this next Friday, March 11th at 2 p.m., right here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. All are welcome. She was a lovely person, is a lovely spirit. Grief support on Zoom. This group, facilitated by Practitioner Carol Winokur, meets this Sunday, next Sunday, March 13th at 1 p.m. And don't forget, we have two services once again at the church. Yay, 945 and 1130. So this is after the 1130 service. We do have a new class, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, with Reverend Sidney Steen. This five-week class, not 10, five-week class starts Tuesday, March 22nd, in person and on Zoom. Join Reverend Sidney for this brand-new exciting class. If you... If you've missed her on Wednesday nights, or if you've heard her on Wednesday nights, you get a very 100% level of excitement with everything. sydney has got a lot going on. You will learn how to apply science of mind principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in the area of relationships, prosperity, and health. Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. Cost is $170. This class does count towards practitioner training. Don't forget to spring forward this Saturday night. It's time again. 
Set your clocks one hour ahead. We're almost there. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every Monday morning through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain these Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. I am done. <laughs> it's a good thing, too, because the paper just missed appeared. Thank you, Sam, and uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary Hammond, so much for that gift. That was lovely. I appreciate that. And um, Carrie, is Carrie here holding a vigil? Um, Facebook Live, we have Melissa Allen, my sister. Uh, Zoom support, Reverend Nadine and Diane Satterley are helping us out there. And of course, lights and sound, we have Adam Keshin and Colleen Butler for our greeter and usher. And here in our tech team, we have Doreen Remo and Nikki Savara and Blair Thompson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, Mary, Mary Highland, do you have like a maryhighland.com kind of music thing? No, we don't. I don't either, so it's okay. Um, but thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Maestro Sam. Thank you, Practitioner Sam. Thank you all for coming here. And let's just take one more breath and just say, Silent to yourself, just say, yes, I am the place of love. Yes, I am the place of God. Yes, I am the place of peace. Yes, I am the place of all good things, for God is my life. Thank you, beloved I am, beloved I am. And so it is, amen. Be blessed. Have a great night. Thank you. Let's all stand and sing one more time. Bless it always. Bless it always. That we raise.